this um, means can be related with different kind of human cancer. You have here a list. And they can act as tumor suppressor genes or oncogenes. And the alteration in the expression levels of these mirrors are related to these cancer-specific mirror fingerprintings and many human cancers. And these mirrors can be up or down regulated in these cancers, and therefore, figuring out the regulation pattern of these um, mirrors is uh, an important tool in order to study or to provide information about the relevant roles in the tumor initiation, progression of invasion, and metastasis. Therefore, this finding highlights the need of using mirrors as minimally invasive biomarker for diagnosis of human cancer, and therefore, to make this mirrors testing as a routine part of medical care for cancer diagnosis, progression, prognosis, and response to their needs. Nevertheless, this is not an easy task because some intrinsic, intrinsic characteristic of MIRS, such as their short sequence length, their low abundance, typically less than 1% relative to other cellular RNAs, and the high sequence similarity between MIRS family members make this a very, very challenging task. Currently, MIRS identification is made by using molecular biology techniques of next generation sequences, but many of these techniques suffer from very well-known drawbacks, and therefore, the development of novel methods to measure MIRS with this uh, desirable characteristic is, 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 a, is an important task. So, which was, which is our approach? Our approach is the combination of several, several characteristics. We combine, it, we combine it, the benefits of functionalized magnetic beads, in this case, kitin modified magnetic beads, with the use of a screen printed carbon electron as electrochemical transducer, and the use as capture receptor of this P19 viral protein. This is a dimer that acts as a um, caliper to bind and sequester only a small double-stranded RNAs of 19, or between 19, 23 um, per base long with nanomolar affinity in a site-selective and relatively sequencing independent manner. And we express this protein with a kitin with a terminal ketin binding domain in order to be able to link, to attach to the ketin modified magnetic beads. As the target analyte, we selected MIR21 because it is the only MIR overexpressed in a wide variety of cancers and a proven oncogen. So, which is the, mm, the, mm, the different steps involved in the, in the, in the whole essay? First of all, the total RNA was extracted from cancer cells or tissues, and the target MIR21 was hybridized in solution with a biotinylated and a specific anti-MIR21 to form the corresponding, the corresponding duplex. This duplex with this uh, with the, 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 the optimal size to be recognized by P19 was then attached of P19 capture receptor, which was immobilized on the ketin modified magnetic beads, as I told you before, through the terminal ketin binding domain. And we obtain here the magnetic beads bearing the biotinylated duplex. This biotinylated duplex was then labeled with estrostabidine peroxidase through the interaction between biotin and estrostabidine. And the magnetic beads bearing the whole stuff were magnetically captured onto the surface of the screen printed carbon electron by applying the magnetic field, by placing the magnet down the surface of the working electrode. And then the electrochemical movement was made amperometrically at minus point 
20, 20 volts by using hydrogen peroxide as region and using also hydron, hydroquinone as uh, electron mediator. We saw the analytical characteristic we obtained with synthetic mi 21 and it's important to remark that the limit of detection was 0.04 nanomolar. That is 0.4 femtomolar in 10 microliters of samples without the use of any amplification method. With no amplification, no need for PCR, no, no amplification method directly. And moreover, the magneto sensors prepared with P19 modified magnetic bits, which were stored in filter binding buffer at four degrees, show no decrease in the amperometric response for at least 45 days. This is very stable magneto sensor. So we tested this uh, system as an in situ testing system for total RNA extracted from breast cancer cell lines. This is a challenging task because of the high sensitivity required because the total RNA extracted from, from these cells contains only a very low amount of the target mirror and contains also important amounts of other mirrors. So this is a quite challenging task. So we extracted total RNA from two metastatic breast cancer cell lines, this one, and also to be able to compare from a, a primary epithelial non-tumorogenic cell line, this is a normal cell, non-tumor cell, and also from HeLa cells. HeLa cells are from uh, a human cervix adenocarcinoma cell line. This is a different, different cell line than breast cancer cell, cells. And both of these have no detectable amount of MIR-21. It's not, MIR-21 is not overexpressed in, this, in, this um, in these two cell lines. You can see here that the magneto sensor was able to discriminate perfectly between the signals uh, with respect to the blank signals, signals only from the total RNA extracted from the metastatic breast cancer cells. With respect to a factor of four, six, with respect to the non-tumorogenic cells, as you can see here. So this, this can be used as a pronostic tool to evaluate the, 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 the the disease, in fact. But we were also able to quantify the amount of MIR-21 in these metastatic bre breast cell lines. We demonstrated that working with a total RNA amount extracted from the cell lines lower than one microgram, microgram no matrix effect appeared. And therefore, quantification could be accomplished by simple interpolation of the amperometric signal obtained from uh, cell extracts using 0.5 micrograms of, of total RNA into the calibration plots constructed with synthetic MIR-21 MIR solutions. You can see here the results obtained. And it's also very important to remark that the relative standard deviation value obtained with five different extracts show it an acceptable reproducibility value taking into account that we check the whole method. That is the total RNA extraction protocol plus the electrochemical biosensor performance. And we also explore the feasibility of this magneto sensor to analyze total RNA extracted, not for cell line, from cell lines, but from breast cancer tissues and cytology specimens. This is also important results. Mm. We extracted the total RNA from breast cancer tissues, the, the, the histograms mark with a T, and also from paired normal adjacent tissues, marked as NT and from breast cytology. You can see here 
that the biosensor could discriminate perfectly well between the breast cancer tissues from the normal tissues. And in the case of sample of the patient T1, this low expression of MIR-20 wall was attributed to the fact that this patient had suffered chemotherapy before surgery. Therefore, these results can be used, the, the, the measurement of the expression level of this MIR-21 in, in breast cancer tissues can be used as a prognostic tool to, uh, um, for this important disease. And also can be used as a um, tool for patient stratification into good and bad responders. And, and also we were able to measure the expression of MIR-20 wall in, uh, from a breast cytology specimen. This is also a very, very important result because cytology provides a sample from the anterior cut surface of the tumor, thus avoiding um, problems related to the heterogeneity of the tumor. The tumor is not exactly the same in all parts and also for a limited size of the tumor. As you can see here, we could see the overexpression of MIR-21 in this breast cytology specimen. In, in our knowledge, this is the first time that an electrochemical biosensor was used to determine, to quantify, and to detect MIR-21 in breast cancer tissues and, bre and breast cancer um, cytologies. So I arrived to the end. Some uh, small conclusions. Electroanalytical strategies involving biosensing approaches using immunosensors and genosensors in general provide versatile and efficient analytical tools to be employed for the detection or quantification of analytes of clinical significance. Not only of clinical significance, we are more focused to clinical, to analytes of clinical relevance, but not only to that. And the coupling of these approaches with the use of different non-conventional biorecognition elements, such nanobodies, for example, open new avenues for the detection of relevant target analytes as required to take urgent action in many fields of economical and social, and social significance. This is important because these electrochemical biosensing approaches compare advantageously with other analytical methodologies available in terms of simplicity, rapidly, rapidity, portability, and cost affordability. And therefore, can be, well, easily, this is probably too optimistic, but they can be transferred to the productive se sector. In particular, these strategies, that's what we wanted to, to achieve, are especially appropriate for the development of easy to use and portable devices for point of care purposes. And this is also expedited, this is also uh, assisted by the use of nanomaterials. As you can see, as you have seen, graphene polymer soluble hybrid nanomaterials can be successfully explored to design novel interfaces with improved electrochemical performance with respect to base on the use of a single nanomaterial. This is also one of the goals, to use hybrid nanomaterials because of the synergetic effect they can provide. And the incorporation of other nanomaterial to the hybrid, such as Go nanoparticles, open new possibilities for enhanced three-dimensional graphene-based structures suitable to be employed in biosensing application. Well, last but no least, muito obrigado. Thank you very much. Gracias. Uh, Homeo. Yeah, congratulations. Very, very interesting work. Uh, Thank you. I wonder, uh, you're talking about disposable devices. Okay. So, no question on the this, on this stability. <coughs> but the question is, once you prepare it, how long can you have it before you use it and, yeah. and get the same result? This is an important question. Yeah. This is actually one of the points we checked always. And it depends. It depends on the, on the biological receptor. In the case, for example, of these P19, these magnetic sensors, we could store for at least 45 days without a significant decrease in the parametric response. When we analyze hormones, they take, they can be stored for at least two, three weeks. But it depends on the biological recognition element. So they are more stable 
they are less stable. You work with glucose oxidase, you can keep for years. But you work with other enzymes or, or mainly antibodies, probably no more than two weeks. Perhaps to start the refrigerator, no? Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is always we always we test the way for the, for the storage. So sometimes it's under dry conditions, other times it's under wet condition, immersed in the buffer. This is something that you have to test. But you have to pay attention if you are a pipette, no? Sometimes. The, the speed you, you transfer the, the mm -hmm. form makes a, a little difference. Yeah. And, uh, by person, by person to use the same, uh, the, the same yeah. material. We have prepared, yeah. we have a homemade, um, a special cellule to do that. So the whole, in some cases we work by dropping the, the, the but yeah, so, we put it in a, a horizontal a place immersed in a, um, in, a, in a homemade cell in order to put the whole device into the cell. Ah, okay. And in that way, to avoid all the different, the irreproducibility due to dropping of the, I can, I can send you one of the, one of the images. Uh, yes, yeah. I have in the office. When you say solvo polymer, it's a solvo before you prepare the, the sensor. No? After the polymerization, the polymer you feed is soluble. It's, no, no, no. It's, 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 it's highly soluble. Highly soluble. Highly soluble. Before so preparation. Yeah, and, and when you prepare the hybrid nanomaterial, you compare to this hybrid nanomaterial with the solubility of the polymer. Oh. This is one of the goals. Because to prepare graphene-based derivatives with high solubility, high, let's say, yeah. with sufficient solubility to be used in bioelectronalytical applications. And the polymer... Uh, uh, don't you, when, when you have a graphene, you, if you don't protect it, you have a coalescence, no? And the polymer? No, no in this case, because, this case because the polymer, you start with mm, graphite, graphene oxide, oxide. and then you, you put the polymer, and during, uh, we make incubation for, for with, uh, mm, the dendro, with the dendrimer was 12 hours, and the same protocol, the same treatment, uh, produce it, provoke it, the reduction of graphene oxide and the attachment of the polymer. The attachment polymer. The polymer and so, the, exactly. The, 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 the and the whole, yeah, the whole stuff is protected yeah. with that. Yeah. In the case you, you, you determine the zero and saliva, the first one, mm -hmm. you change the pH too, no? Mm -hmm. From of the course. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, mm -hmm. you have to change, no? Yeah. Saliva is about the... Mm -hmm. No, this is five different. To five, uh, 5 5.5 and zero is, is 7.4, no? Let's see. The pH, no? The pH. The pH. Is, uh, the, pH, pH, is, pH. Yeah. the pH. The pH is. Uh, it's, it's okay, it's, uh, you, you change the, the pH, no? Ah, sorry. No, it's the same pH. It's the same one. Yeah, yeah because you, you dilute. Of, oh, okay. you, you dilute, dilute, dilute the sample. The amount of sample is yeah. smaller. It's, it's, Two microliters serum plus 100 microliters of, 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 of buffer, and you take three microliters aliquots. In this case, it's one milliliter saliva plus one milliliter tree pH buffer. So you do. Any question more? How about the MIRS? Uh, can you find the MIRS in the blood? No. Mm. Can you use the MIRS to protect um, the city? Actually, we are now immersed in a European project in order to do something related to that. So MIRA is also associated with circulating tumor cells, and we want to do something to measure that. But the problem is I'm not sure if the sensitivity even is very good would be, would be sufficient to measure uh, means uh, release by the circulating tumor cells in a diet manner. Probably it would be necessary to do some pre concentration in order to achieve the sensitivity required. Because directly it's very difficult because the concentration of circulating means in blood is very, very, very low. But we are, we are trying to do something on that. I saw you, you use uh, drop sense uh, electrodes. They are okay or? 
for us, they are the, the, the best, because the market, actually, there is no well, between principles in a Spanish company, we have very good relations with, <laughs> yeah, yeah. with it, <laughs> Sorry. but actually, in this case, <laughs> yeah, in, in this case, we check it for yeah. other companies, we check it's an Italian company, in a Czech company, and the performance and the stability, the reproducibility of the movements with job substance, or for us, was the better, was, was the best. So we're very happy with this kind of... I guess the thing of uh, uh, spring print or the bismuth ones, just one shot. Hmm. Because they, they press the, the bismuth or matai, hmm. you can use it one, more than hmm. one time. But the others, I think... So. Yeah, we never use bismuth. But in your case, you just use one, once. Yeah. No? Yeah, one. no, but yeah. we study also the reproducibility between different... In, uh, between uh, the, uh, many yeah. of them. Yeah. With, with, with different immunosensors yeah, yeah. prepared with yeah, the same yeah. other and the relative standard deviation are always lower than 10%. You no, know, they, they work very well. They screen printed carbon electrode and screen yeah. printed gold electrodes gold. that are where, what we are using mostly. Okay. And the dual one is very nice, mm -hmm. you know? The dual. You have the potentiometer to use the dual. It's a nice idea mm -hmm. to use the dual electrode. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's for the simultaneous yeah. determination. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, there is a multiplex platform, multiplex. also from the OPSEMS, yeah. and uh, with eight different eight, screen eight, printed yeah. electrodes yeah. connected in, to, to in, this in series in order to get eight different Very nice. parameters. Because, for example, with cancer biomarkers, uh, it's very important to have a, a, a combination of different yeah. markers yeah. in order to get a real important diagnosis. You have one, no? Yeah, you have it. You have a way to get one of the